Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Assalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah Nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr Wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr Laylatul qadr khayrun min alf shahr Tanazzalul malaikatu wa ruhu fiha bi idhni rabbihim min kulli amar Salamun hiya hatta matla'il fajr Sadaqallahul Ali al-Azim Lama'i kiram My respected brothers and sisters There is no other surah in the Quran Like this one where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the entire surah mentions about a specific period of time. No other surah. Other places in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of things like Hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of things like Ramadan and in other specific timing. But there's not an entire surah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the, you know, so specifically and dealt with in detail about the period of a specific time where every single ayah of the surah was just about this period of time and the period of time we're talking about is Laylatul Qadr. Subhanallah, the, the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the surah and as well the reason why I'm doing this in this part of the program where it's, it's latter today you know, the last 10 nights, it is because of all the opinions, and most of them, according to Imam Ar-Razi, subhanAllah, there are nine opinions, there are 40 opinions, there are, you know, some, some Imam mentioned different opinions of when is the night of Qadr. But in checking all of the hadith, all of the ahadith, every single one of them, we can come to the point of, of understanding that Laylatul Qadr is found in Al Ashul Awakhir, in the last 10 nights. SubhanAllah. So, what we should do and what is the most important thing, as I say, the first thing about this surah is seek Laylatul Qadr in these last 10 nights. Now, let's go, inshallah, about the tafsir and about the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends this, this surah in the Quran. There is a a lengthy hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, and this is Rawahu al Zaylai and Abu Hassan in Asbab al Nuzul. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this, this is mentioned in Asbab al Nuzul, I'll read to you the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down this, uh, this surah in the Quran. And like many other surahs, we know something happened in a period of time, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down the Quran. This is called Asbab, the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down the Quran. Just to give you a little reference, when the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was giving da'wah and he called the people of Quraysh, he called his family and so on, and Abu Lahab was there and other people was there and other chiefs of clans were there, and he says, if I'm going to tell you that beyond this mountain lies such and such, and there's an army to attack you, would you believe me? And they said that of course we would believe you that you are a, a sadiqal amin, the most truthful one. And then he called them to Islam, and Abu Lahab told him, you know, Tabban laka, you know, woe unto you, is this Fabihaza jaitana, is this why you bring us out here to tell us about this? And immediately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the surah cursing Abu Lahab, Tabbat yada abi lahab yu watab. Right? So that was the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the surah. Likely, 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 Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the surah and we take, talk about the reason, inshallah. Allahu alam ala sihat al hadith. وَأَمَّا سَبَبْ نُزُولُهَا وَأَمَّا سَبَبْ نُزُولِهَا فَلَمْ يُرِدْ أَحَادِي صَحِيحَا فِي ذَلِكْ بِإِسْتِثْنَاءِ مَا رَوَاهُ مُجَاهِدُ وَهُوَ حَدِيثُ مُرْسَلْ This hadith is Mursal. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ذَكَرَ رَجُلًا مِنْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ لَبِسَ السِّلَاحِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى أَلْفَ شَهَرًا The and he labis as silahi, he got ready for war, he got ready to go and fight in the, in the path of Allah. 
fi sabilillahi ta'ala alfa shahar in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a thousand months qala fa ajib al muslimun min zalik fa anzal Allah ta'ala inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr and he said that the muslims around him they they got surprised of this that you know a person can do such an ibadah a person can do such an ibadah because they used to live for so long period of time the people of the past and they can go in jihad they can go in struggling in the path of allah for a thousand months you know and we our lifespan is just you know 50 to 60 60 to 70 years so how can we how can we match such an ibadah how can we do something similar to that so the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned this and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr laylat ma ma adraka ma laylatul qadr laylatul qadr khayr min alf shahr الذي لبس السلاح فيها في سبيل الله تعالى the one who carried weapons and fought in the path of Allah strove in the path of Allah for a thousand months so inshallah we will get straight to the surah inshallah without any delaying our time is also limited Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention and I quote the first ayah بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر my respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily we, inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Verily we revealed who? Who is a damir? Inna anzalnahu, we revealed it in the night of qadr. We will go, you know, word to word, inshallah, letter to letter. Inna anzalnahu. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the Quran sometimes, you know, who brought the Quran down from the Lawhil Mahfuz, the protected tablet in the seventh heaven, to the Sama'u Dunya, to the first heaven? Jibra'il descended with the Quran, and he was the one entrusted to descend it to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all the other prophets before with the other kitab. But here Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala saying so, you know, uniquely Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu, verily we send the Quran. Meaning that he did not mention Jibra'il, he mentioned himself. Of how powerful it is the statement to saying that Allah is the one who descended the statement. Allahu Akbar. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu, rather than say, Inna anzalna al-Quran. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily we sent it. As opposed to say, we sent the Quran. It is because when this surah was revealed in Mecca, it was the talk of the tongue. It was the talk of the city. Everybody is talking about the Quran. Every single one is talking about the Quran. So because it was so popular on the tongues of people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, in his knowledge says, Inna anzalnahu, verily we revealed it. And normally, if you use out damir, you would have to use something before that. If you use a pronoun to say it, you would have to use something before that so people would know what you're talking about. Let's say we're talking about a car, and I says, bring it here. But we're talking about a car. You would know that I'm talking the it, the damir, the pronoun refers to the car. But here, without any single introduction, without mentioning anything about the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna anzalnahu, verily we revealed it, we descended it, fi laylatul qadr, in the night of Laylatul Qadr, in the night of Laylatul Qadr. Now, before I get into different opinions, in what is the meaning of the word Qadr, right? I want to mention to you that, subhanAllah, verily we reveal the Quran in Laylatul Qadr. In another place in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the, the descending of the Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al Quran. That it is in the month of Ramadan where we send the Quran, where we descended. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. It was in the month of Ramadan where we descended the Quran, subhanAllah. So here more specifically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. That yes in the month of Ramadan, but when? Inna anzalnahu, verily we revealed it, which is the Quran. In the night of power, in the night of power, and, and subhanAllah, some of them says that the damir, this pronoun was, was, you know, it is 
a statement of the surah before it because the first surah the first revelation which came down was ikra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq so some said that it that was the beginning of it so when it was revealed ikra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq and the rest of it from the law al mahfuz to the sama al dunya right from the seventh heaven to the fourth heaven and then from there to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam over a period of 23 years the beginning of that of that of that you know revelation to the rasul was ikra bismi rabbika alladhi and when it was revealed in the night of Laylatul Qadr, subhanAllah. So my respected brothers and sisters, we continue. Ibn Abbas says, verily we, the sender of the Quran, we send down the Quran, entire Quran from the seventh heaven to the first in the night of Laylatul Qadr. Then from the heaven, the first heaven, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over a period of 23 years. So the revelation happened in two phases. One from the seventh heaven to the sama or dunya, to the lowest heaven. And then from there to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, my respected brothers and sisters. The meaning of the word Qadr, Laylatul Qadr. Now, Layla is night, Qadr now. What is the meaning of the word Qadr? And I want to give you about three or four or five meanings of the word Qadr so we can understand the power of this word, so we can understand the power of this surah. You know, how, how strong it is, how... The, the, the meaning it, it has. So when we read it in, Qur, in Quran, when we recite it in Salah, inshallah, we can be able to have a deeper meaning of the understanding of the Quran. Firstly, one of the meanings of the word Qadr is calculation, decree. You know, in decree in Qiyas. You know, Qadrnahu manazila, you know, calculated the stages for the, for the moon. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. So one of this is the interpretation whereby you know, it's corroborated with the saying of Surah, of, of surah Dukhan. In this night in which Allah SWT sends down major decisions, the decree. The decree from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that is going to happen for the entire following year. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sends it down, the calculations, the decree, all good decree. Everything, every single thing good that is going to happen in this dunya. Who's going to get married? Who's going to get engaged? SubhanAllah, who's going to have a child, a boy child, a girl child? You know, who's going to prosper in this? Who's going to prosper in that? Every single decree, good that is going to happen, is sent down in this night with the angels. So that is one, subhanAllah. Islam, you know, who's going to die a peaceful death? Every single thing. So all the information and decisions are made by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But on this night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down the decree to the angel. Or the angels bring it down with the decisions and they execute these decisions in the night of Laylatul Qadr. So it is a night of Laylatul Qadr, verily we revealed it, the Qur'an, in the night of decree. That's number one. Number two, manzila, sharaf, which is honor, nobility. This is a night of honor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down the noblest, of, the noblest of kitabs, the noblest of Qur'an in this night of honor. With the noblest of angel, Jibra'il alayhi salatu waslam, through the noblest of prophets, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is absolutely amazing, this, this meaning, which is nobility or sharaf. Number, number, you know, number three, and before I get into that, subhanAllah, what we should also understand is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose from His creation. What is the meaning of that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the seven heavens and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Jannatul Firdaus to be the best of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the angels and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Jibra'il to be the best of them. And soon we're going to come to Jibra'il, which I'll mention a little thing, you know, a little uh, explanation about Jibra'il. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the dunya and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Masjid al Haram. He made Makkah. Mukarrama. He made Medina Munawara and Masjid Al-Aqsa to be the best of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you know, people, human beings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not only made Muhammad Mustafa to be the best of them, but He made Muhammad Mustafa to Muhammad Janabi Mustafa, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be the last of prophets, the best of prophets, and the seal of all prophets. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Ramadan. Allahu Akbar, to be the best of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the days. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha to be the best of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created days, you know, which came together like in a month. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah to be the best of them. Why? Liwujud al-Arafa fi. Because Arafa is found in these best 10 days, in these first 10 days. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the night and he made the last 10 nights of Ramadan, Ashaw al-Awakhir al-Ramadan, to be the best of them. Why? Liwujud al-Laylatul Qadr fi. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created nights and now we're being specific to one night. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Laylatul Qadr to be the best of them. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down kitab, books, right? So many sahifa, so scrolls and kitabs. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Quran Kareem to be the best of them. So this night where it been Laylatul Qadr, the night of nobility, what we should understand, inna anzalnahu, verily we reveal the Quran in the night of nobility, meaning that number one, this night is the best of all nights. And we send down the Quran, which is the best of all kitab, which is the best of all books in this night. With the best of all angels that was created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this night, in this night of honor. And in this on night of honor as well, we send down the Quran to the best of all prophets. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is the best of them. And where we sent it down to as well, Allahu Akbar, we can continue more and more, as if we have the time. And we sent it down as well where? And where the, the Quran was revealed in Makkah and Medina, two of the holiest of places. So it's all best, it's all honor and honor and honor and nobility, my respected brothers and sisters. The third meaning, which we all know, the third meaning of this, this word Qadr, Laylatul Qadr, which we all know is the night of power. Is the night of power. The night of power meaning that, you know, in this night, subhanAllah, we have to have complete faith in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change. Because this is the night where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down the Quran. And it is what? Alladhi hudallin nas. And it is a guidance for mankind. So not only we got the gift of the Quran, but we should also seek this night of Laylatul Qadr that we do the recitation of the Quran and we do the salah and we do the zikr and we do the dua whereby we beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah grant us the ability to change in this night of power because number one you have made this night of decree where everything good came from, came from you in this night number two right the sharaf the, the honor nobility the force the force the force the force to the best to the, to, from the best to the best subhanallah and number three the night of power number four the night of you know the congested night, Laylatul Qadr, the night of congestion. How? How congestion? Subhanallah. Because angels come down through to the earth, and we will get into the meaning where the ayah comes down, where the ayah, you know, uh, is mentioning about the angels coming down. But the night of congestion, because why? Angels come down like never before, and they fill and flood the earth. They fill and flood the earth to anyone. And they're, you know, they're there just waiting anyone to just make a dua, to say amin to the dua, to follow you in salah, to listen to the Quran, waratil Quran at tartila, and every single thing. So the night of congestion, you know, where the angels come and they flood the earth. Subhanallah. You know, subhanallah, this night as well, and you know, he, uh, the, the Mufassir that I'm, I'm quoting, subhanallah, he says, this night as well, we should also understand this, like is the, this night is like the Eid of the Qur'an. And what is the meaning of the word, the Eid of the Qur'an? It is like the birthday, right? Or every single Laylatul Qadr is like the night where the Qur'an was first revealed. It's like, it's like you know, the, the, the anniversary of the Qur'an. You know, not to make mention too much about it, but we should also understand that this is the night where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first sent down the Qur'an. SubhanAllah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that we should remind one another of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one of the days where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Quran firstly. So we should also understand that this is like the Eid of the Quran. Subhanallah. Ibn Ashur says that, that this should be considered the Eid of the Quran. Like this is the anniversary of the Quran. Second ayah. And what do, do you know? The Mufassir says this is... You know, the wisdom, you know, in this night is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَدْرَكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ This is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that He is about to tell us 
What is the night of Qadr? وَمَا أَدْرَكَ What do you know of the night of Qadr? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهَرٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says You know, and we, let's make some, let's make some tafsir, let's continue with the tafsir inshallah Some wisdom in not knowing when is the night of Qadr Like Imam Razi explained Now one of the things that we should know Is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, you know, he said in the hadith that verily I was made to know when is the night of Qadr, what is the night of Qadr, when it is. But then I was made to forget it. And it was said that Rasulullah came out of, his, of the chambers, came out of the place where he was, about to tell the people, and two Sahaba were arguing with, with, with each other. And subhanAllah, of this little incident, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but then the Rasul was caused to forget. And then he says that maybe it is better for you. Excuse me. Maybe it is better for you that you saw, seek the night of Qadr in the last ten nights. Subhanallah. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa he was also made a reference to Ali ibn Abi Talib to wake up and subhanallah to continuously pray in the night of Qadr. Subhanallah. And my respected brothers and sisters, we should also understand that Allah subhanahu wa says, وَعَلَمُ أَنَّ فِيكُمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw a man was sleeping and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu to wake up this companion and tell him to pray. Then, was, then Ali bin Ali, Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu and I'm mentioning this so you should understand why one of the hikmah, one of the wisdom why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't tell us when is the night of Qadr. So Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala and who went and he waked the, 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 the man up, the Sahaba, and he prayed. And then Ali bin Abi Talib came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, normally you would do the good deeds yourself. You wouldn't tell nobody to do the good deeds. You would, you would be the first to do it. And then you would tell elders and so on. That why did you tell me to tell him to wake up? Why didn't you tell him to wake up yourself? So you would get the good deeds. You would get the blessings. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ali, you see, if I tell him to wake up and he doesn't wake up, he shooed me off, or he, or, or he got lazy, it would be that, you know, like, like he committed kufr. It would be like he, he directly disobeyed a command from the messenger of Allah. But if you tell him to wake up, you see, you know, that is of a lesser degree. Because he's, if he disobeyed you, that is no problem with that. Right? You know, if he got lazy or if he didn't do it, he's not a problem with that. But if he did directly disobey me, it would have been like, you know, such a, such a grave crime. So imagine the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa understand now. Imagine the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa had told us when is the night of power. Right? And subhanAllah, there are so many descriptions. One hadith says the night of Qadr, this is in Ibn Kathir, the 27th night. That's why people pray so much in the 27th night. But then there are 29 nights, the, 20, the 25th, the 23rd, the 24th, the 21st, and so on. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned in other hadith, you know, like there are over 40 according to, uh, uh, according to Imam al-Razi, you know, over 40 narrations. But then he says, seek the night of Qadr in the last 10 nights because I was told when it was, but then I was made to forget. So imagine the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa told us when is the night of Qadr, and that night I feel to not, you know, to, uh, to, to, to relax or not to seek the night of Qadr. It would have been like I directly disobeyed the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It directly disobeyed the command from the Rasul. So it is all in the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he didn't tell us when is the night of Qadr. Subhanallah. Uh, so as, gra as grand of a something, like Laylatul Qadr, right? As grand of a something, we should also understand that if we take it lightly or if we disobey such a command, it would also be grand in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, with that mentality that the, of the hadith that I quoted before, inshallah. So, number one, right, and we continue now, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us now, all the ayah that was revealed was because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answering the question that he says, وَمَا أَدْرَكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ What do you know of the night of Qadr? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answer, answered in every single ayah after that, the answer to this question, what do you know of Laylatul Qadr? Meaning he's telling us, what is Laylatul Qadr? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. Subhanallah. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. That Laylatul Qadr is better than a thousand months. Right? So now what we, should, what we want to, uh, 
to mention that the word qadr also means value. That the night of value, what the night of value? What is the value of it? Better than a thousand months. Subhanallah, now this has a long explanation and it is so beautiful. When I did the tafsir of this, I was actually happy to seek the night of Qadr because of this, the explanation of this ayah alone. Some people can, may, some people can you know, literally calculate it and say it's 83.3 something years. That is correct. So if someone says one subhanallah or pray two rakat of salah and it is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is like doing that act of ibadah for 83 plus years. But what we should also understand, 83 years is a long time. And it can be considered as a lifetime for someone. So if you seek the night of Qadr, and you find the night of Laylatul Qadr, and you do ibadat in, in that night, it would have been like if you do ibadat, you know, righteous deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for an entire lifetime. For an entire lifetime. Number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the night of value, right, the night of decree, the night of power, the night of nobility, the night where the angels congest the earth, khayrun is better than a thousand months. So it's not just 83.3 years, but it's better than that. How much better that is only in the knowledge of Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can multiply deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, all the actions of, of, of the son of Adam can be multiplied from 10 to 700 times. From 10 to 700 times. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laylatul Qadri, the night of value, the night of Qadr, decree, the night of power, right? The night of congestion where the angels come down and flood the earth. Khairun, it is better than a lifetime. It's better than 83.3 years. It is better than a thousand months. Khairun min alfi shahr. Subhanallah. So if you seek this night with the dhikr and the ibadats and so on, subhanallah, the night of decree, the night of honor, the night of qadr, the night of nobility, power, right? Subhanallah, the night where the angels cramped and crowd the earth, this night, if you seek it and find it, literally change the course of your entire life. It would literally, literally change the course of the rest of your life because it is as though you have acted, did an action of ibadah that is worth a lifetime. That is worth a lifetime. This is enough, my respected brothers and sisters, for us to seek the night of Qadr. This is literally enough. Inshallah, we will take a small break now. And when we come back, inshallah, we will, we will go with some of the other meanings of the night of Qadr and the rest of the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains what is the night of power.